Welcome back to Just Books. Delhi-based journalist Rahul Pandita is just out with a remarkable new book. It's called Hello Basta, the untold story of India's Maoist movement. He spent a great deal of time in the key districts where the Maoist insurgency has not only been existing, but according to him, gathering steam over recent decades. Rahul, it's a remarkable piece of reportage. Uh, and uh, in two years in particular, you conducted very intensive um, investigation travels into the lives of the insurgents and the tribals in these populations. In particular, because your book is called Hello Buster, you concentrate on the districts, the deeply forested area of Dandakaranya in Chhattisgarh. Why do you call it Hello Buster? Is it because that is the deepest, darkest area of concentration of the rebellion? See, the problem with the, the Naxal literature so far has been uh, that a lot of most of it is talks about the 1967 Naxal Bari revolution. And all the literature that has come so far is so dense. Uh, you know, it almost reads like a Maoist party literature. Right, covered so, in jargon yeah. or in kind of very, as you say, dense and in, in West Bengal, analysis. In West Bengal, yes. So my uh, point was that I wanted to tell the story of the modern Maoist movement. Uh, I wanted to tell the story of these uh, handful of Maoist guerrillas, both men and women, who entered into the jungles of Dandakaran and Bastar in June 1980. And these are the people who have created this movement from scratch, what New Delhi now calls as uh, India's gravest internal security threat. So uh, this is the story I wanted to tell in my book. Right. You mentioned hunger deaths. Uh, this, these have been prevalent in, in Orissa, where the movement has expanded, in what is called the KBK corridor, Koraput, Bolangi, Kalahandi. Now these hunger deaths have been prevalent there not for years, but for decades. Yes. And according to both the state government and the central government, money and social welfare schemes and all kinds of um, handouts have been poured in for decades. Yet, how does this problem remain completely unchecked in places like that? You see, whatever resources the government sends, it never reaches an ordinary person, ordinary tribal. You, you know, the excuse the government of India uses many times is that, you know, you cannot bring in development there, in a particular area, say Dantewada, or, or Narayan Patna in Orissa, because there already is a Maoist presence. So they need to root it out before they send in development. To which my reply is, what about those areas where there is minimal Maoist presence or no Maoist present, uh, presence at all? For God's sake, you have, uh, you know, food grains, lakhs of tons of food grains Going rotting in go-downs. Right. And, you can, and yet, you cannot have a distribute, distribution system by which this food grain actually reaches the poor. So what kind of administration are you talking about? Or is, it basic the, is it that the Maoists have not only abducted or taken over whatever the development inputs are, as well as indeed the armed weaponries and that of the police force and the paramilitary. You see, to my knowledge, uh, the CPM Maoists has never opposed uh, uh, development. You know, they'll oppose the building of a road because they believe that, uh, uh, you know, development will not come by that road or a, or a particular bridge because instead of development, the troopers will come, the soldiers will come and uh, root them out. NDTV's Cricket app. Android and iPhone, faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free ndtv.com slash apps.